Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and as you guys could probably see by the thumbnail and the title, we are going back to NHL 13, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys have voted for what game I should go back and play, uh, and you guys decided NHL 13, which I am very, very pumped to play, uh, NHL 13 was probably one of my favorites, I mean, 13 was right next to NHL 14, which was probably one of the best NHL games to be ever be released, uh, one of my favorites, so uh, if you guys haven't already make sure to uh, smack that like button hit that uh, subscribe button as well it'll be very much appreciated as we're gonna have a lot of fun with this series as let's get into this bad boy and already look at the goddamn menus man the menus are so crisp and actually really fast too i really did like the old menus and one thing before we get into you know the the team you guys already know it's the vancouver canucks which i'm very pumped up to play as but there's a winter classic mode how the hell does this game in NHL 13 have a fucking winter classic, but fucking NHL 22 doesn't? It absolutely blows my mind. And the FGM connected. There's so much features in this friend in this game more than what they got in NHL 22. It's absolutely just blows my mind. But today we're gonna to be starting up a new franchise mode. Um, you know I you know I was kind of getting tired of NHL 22. Uh, the way that it was playing, it just. It wasn't very fun, to be quite honest with you. It really wasn't, so I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to go back uh, and play one of the old NHL games. I've seen a few other YouTubers do it, so I was like, you know what? You know, let, let's do it. You know, let's go back in time, play some franchise mode on one of the older games, and have some fun, you know? Uh, there was a few teams that were up co to contention to being picked, because I wanted to kind of pick a team that is a tweener team. I didn't want to full-blow do a rebuild and get a bunch of unknown players on the team. I kind of wanted to do a team... That is on the cusp of being a playoff team. Like the Minnesota Wild, there were a team that I was thinking about. I think I was also thinking about either Columbus or Colorado as well. I thought Colorado would have been an interesting team since they have like Duchesne and a lot of players that are building up. Sorry if you guys were in the mic there, but there's a lot of guys that were building up. But I thought it'd be an interesting team to do is the Vancouver Canucks because they just came off uh, of going to the Stanley Cup Finals not that long ago, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, about two years ago, the Canucks made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, and they haven't been able to get back there since. So I'm going to take control of the team, fix up, you know, the mistakes that they formerly did. As you guys all know, they traded away Kessler, which they got a decent haul back, but definitely not what they're probably wanting. And uh, they traded away Luongo, they traded away Schneider, which Jacob Markstrom was good down the road, but... They did a lot of crazy moves that ended up really not working out too well for the Vancouver Canucks. And we're going to try to change that up a little bit. We're going to take the team in totally a different direction than what uh, they were originally doing. So it's going to be a really fun franchise mode, I think. And I hope you guys will enjoy this series as well. Uh, for me going back and playing one of the old games, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Especially since my 360 is still somehow working. I thought it would be... Blast of a series to do. So let's get into what we got here in Vancouver, which we don't got a whole lot. I was already looking at this team, and we definitely do not got a whole lot for the team right now. But, you know, we'll, we'll make make it work with what we got. So, of course, we got the Sedins. Uh, Daniel Sedin and Henrik Sedin both coming off pretty good years, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Henrik coming off in an 81-point season. Uh, still has been just an absolute ble uh, beast of a playmaker. And then you got Daniel, just one overall ahead of him at 32 years of age so both of them very very old players you know they're up there in the age 32 years of age so we don't got a whole lot of time to make this team you know a playoff team we still do got ryan kessler though which is a, i think a big thing for us now we're not going to trade away kessler i think this is a guy that we should keep absolutely on the team especially that five million dollar deal is absolutely beautiful definitely we can make the team a little bit deeper if we were to trade him but i think we're gonna play a little smart with him and keep him and then you got uh, david booth um another guy that you know got stricken hard by injuries a player that is pretty reliable and really good uh we'll have to see how well he'll do on the vancouver canucks i think this is his first year and then you got burrows uh chris higgins as well mason raymond uh, and then you got Janik Hansen, uh, Lapierre, Manny Maholtra, Cassian, good prospect that we can maybe potentially turn away or just let them develop on the team. Defenseman, we got Alexander Edler, which I'm pretty excited to have on the team. Young guy, 88, uh, 88 overall. He's going to be a free agent this year, but we do have a decent amount of money going into next year. Dan Hamuse as well. Bieksa, Ballard, and uh, Jason Garrison. So I think... For sure, we're definitely going to clean up the defenseman, especially Jason Garrison, I think, is a guy that we might potentially trade away down the road just because of his contract is 
absolutely massive, and I definitely don't want to continue to eat it. Uh, then you got Derek Jocelyn and Christopher Tanev, which I think we're going to play Jocelyn this year uh, on the uh, the top six, even though he's not really the best top six guy in the world. And then you got Roberto Luongo and Sh uh, Corey Schneider. Uh, Schneider uh, locked up for the next little bit at four mil, and then you also got Roberto Luongo locked up at uh, 5.3 for the next 10 years. Uh, so Luongo is locked up for a very long time, and I think... I don't know what we're going to really do with the goaltending situation. I was seeing Schneider's trade value is pretty high up there. And honestly, we could get a decent haul out of Schneider and then just deal with the goaltending situation later and kind of just run with Luongo. Um, just because we're trying to make this team, you know, a playoff team as quick as, he, as we can. And I'm also going to turn off injuries too because I really don't want to deal with injuries. Uh, so we might as well just send down Tanev. We might as well do a free agent signing too to make the team the, the defense a little bit deeper in the back end, I, I think is what I'm going to do. But uh, goaltending, yeah, we're going to go with uh, Schneider and Eddie, La Eddie Lack. So, yeah, I forgot to show you guys the prospects. We really don't got any prospects, and I think that's mostly due to the fact that the Canucks have been trying to go all in the last few years. So um, <laughs> we're going to have to figure out what we're going to want to do. I mean, we're going to mostly just trade away picks, I guess, uh, and try to figure out what we're going to do. But I think if we do trade away Schneider, I think it'll be for a decent haul back. But we don't got a whole lot of... I mean, we still got all of our picks. I don't think that any of our picks have been ever traded. So that's a positive thing. Uh, and then looking at Schneider, um, he has a decent amount of trade value. So, I mean, we could potentially trade him away even now. I don't know if there's anybody available that we can go after and pick up. I also hate how it doesn't show the overalls. Uh, but you got Dougie Hamilton, which would be a nice future player. But wow, that is a low... Jesus, crikey, the potentials are low in this game. I didn't... I didn't think Dougie Hamilton was that bad. Jesus, the crikey, man. Holy crow. Uh, Pysik. I think Pysik's even a higher potential than him. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Holy crow, man. The EA overalls, bro. The EA overalls. They are still an absolute treat sometimes. Um, yeah, I think we just wait for making a deal right now. I don't think there's really any need to, to rush a deal to try to pick up somebody that's going to make the team better right now. There's a lot of older guys and I'd like to, if we're going to make a deal, I would like to get a deal for a guy that is, you know, a guy that's young, uh, still has room to grow and that type of stuff. Cause I think that's a big thing here with the Vancouver Canucks is to bring some younger guys into the squad, uh, to help us still grow the team a little bit. So uh, let's take a look at our lineups and everything like that because I think that's a big thing that we need to do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think what we'll also do is because I, I already did some pre-scouting before starting up the franchise mode as well is uh, picking up a defenseman. Now, Cam Barker is pretty expensive and he's an offensive guy. I'd rather not get an offensive defenseman. I think if anything, I'd rather get like a defensive defenseman for the team, somebody that could play because I think we have a lot of two-way guys. So you got Shane Morrison, and then you got Brett Stuppel, which actually would be perfect. He's a right-handed guy, uh, plays pretty well defensively. Not a great puck mover, but we definitely do need like a top six defenseman, right-handed. Uh, I think Brett Stuppel will be a perfect guy for the team. We'll just sign him for two years or for uh, two mil for one year because I mean we're not going to keep him for very much longer. I think you know two mil one year for uh, Brett Stuppel is absolutely perfect, and we're not going to follow any rules. We're not doing any no movement clauses, so we could do whatever the hell we want to do. We could just swing a deal w with whoever we want to get. Now, if we do sign a guy on the team, most likely I'm going to try to keep him for as long as I possibly can, just because you know it just won't be super realistic to dump off everyone. So Sheldon Surrey, no, decline that. I am not wanting Sheldon Surrey on the team there, boys. I am good. Uh, Brett Stuppel has signed with the Vancouver Canucks. Hal Gill, no, no, I'm good. Man, there's a lot of deals. Usually this never happens. Holy jamoly, tons of deals getting offered to us. And the simulation is very, very slow. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be the fun part about, oh my God. Can you stop the simulation, please? I'm pressing Y. I'm pressing it. Stop. Have, have mercy. I'm pressing the Y button. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> oh, this game, man. Uh, that it brings back memories of the slow simulation. I, at the time, it was fast. <laughs> at the time that we had the simulation, it was fast simulation, but not anymore. It's definitely not fast anymore, that's for sure. 
Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into creating the lineups and everything like that here for the Vancouver Canucks. So of course, yeah, the top line, Sedin, Henrik Sedin, David Booth. I think, uh, Burroughs, uh, no, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll try Burroughs up on the top line with the Sedins. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we got Higgins, Kessler, David Booth, Jet Hansen, Lapierre Raymond, Weiss, Maholtra, and Cassim. Yeah, that works for me. Honestly, there's not any other combinations other, unless we throw Cassim up there, but. I think for right now, we keep it the way that it is and just Hanson with Lapierre. We definitely need to improve our depth, I think, is a big thing. I do like Lapierre and Manny Maholcha, though, for their defense. But I definitely do think we need to upgrade. Actually, they are third-line centers. I think it's just, I, I, he, I forget that, you know, the, I guess the lower overalls. Because even Kessler, yeah, he's a first-line guy in 88 overall, 82 overalls, a second-liner. So the overalls are a little bit different than what they, I guess, used to be. Uh, or nowadays, because the I mean those overalls and you know seventy eight overall and NHL twenty two is definitely not amazing. Uh, so we need to unscratch them, put them there, and then Jocelyn. There we go. So what I wanted to do for the defensive pairings for this team is I wanted Bexa up on the top, Ballard there. We'll throw I think Garrison there, and then I want to bat. We'll do Ballard and um, Stumple together. I think is what we'll do. And we definitely need to upgrade in the top six without a doubt. I think that's definitely a, a point of interest we can upgrade on. Now, uh, we could do Sedin. Yeah, we could do Kessler there. But I don't want to do Lapierre there. We'll put Kessler on the second unit. David Booth up on the top. And I want Burroughs there instead. And then, yeah, Higgins. Sure. Uh, and instead of Garrison, let's get Ballard. I think Ballard will be a better bet than anything with BXA. And then Sedins, Kessler and Booth. BXA, not Garrison, Ballard. PK, I don't really want Henrik up on the PK. Like, you got Kessler, then we could do... What's Hansen at? He's pretty good defensively, so we could throw Hansen there. Because I don't want, you know, our best defenseman to play... Um, we want Edler as the top pairing, yeah. So Edler, Hamhus, Ballard. Uh, Ballard is pretty good defensively. I do like his defensive play in the Manny Maholtra. And we'll get... Burroughs won't be a bad idea because Burroughs is really good defensively. So we will throw him on the PK. So Kessler, Hansen, Burroughs, and Maholtra. Uh, and then Kessler, not Sedin, will throw uh, Maholtra instead. Uh, and then our four-man, four-man, and then our Golton and Luongo and Schneider. I think we all know who the captain is for the team. Uh, did I forget to scratch someone? I'm guessing so. What did I forget to do? Not all of your lines have the correct... Oh, so I'm missing some player on one line? Oh, right there. That's where I'm missing Brent Stuppel. Okay. I was wondering. I was like, where the hell am I missing? Okay, so there we go. Now we're good. So, yeah, that's your Vancouver Canucks for this upcoming season. Honestly, I think uh, it's going to be pretty exciting to, to to start up a franchise mode on this game, quite honestly. So, yeah, Sedin, and then, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to do a franchise mode here with the Vancouver Canucks here on NHL 13, and I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. Like I said, the first episode is really just laying the groundwork for everything getting everything ready for this upcoming season. Um, we're not going to be making any deals, I think, right off the get-go either. I think staying patient with what we have, I think, is the best bet. Uh, and then if later on we want to make a move for Chris, uh, Corey Schneider, I think we'll do it. But for now, I think we'll keep it the way that it is because, I mean, there's not a whole lot of guys that I'd say, you know, yeah, let's go after that guy. That guy would be a really good player for us right now. I think staying patient with what we have, I think, is a good idea. Uh, and if we do need to make a move a little, little bit later on, then we can make that type of move. But I think staying patient is definitely going to be a big thing here with the Vancouver Canucks and making a good team. Like, we definitely want to stack up the team coming into this upcoming playoffs because I think the team can be good. But for now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.